Peace and Pan-Africanism. Good Garvey Day. Grand Rising. Ypsilanti, Michigan. I am in the building. Ypsilanti, Michigan. I am in the building. Ypsilanti, Michigan. I am in the building. I want to first say thank you to all the brothers and sisters who came out yesterday for the first day of the Black Consciousness Conference at Eastern Michigan University. If you were unable to make it yesterday, we are doing it again today, brothers and sisters. Come on out. Black Michigan, Black Ohio, Black Illinois, everybody come on out to the Eastern Michigan University campus. Today will be day two and the final day of the Black Consciousness Conference. Today we will be at the Honors College. We will be at the Honors College on Eastern Michigan University's campus. And the Honors College is located at 511 West Forest Avenue. 511 West Forest Avenue. And that is Forest with one R. That is Forest with one R. 511 West Forest Avenue on the campus of Eastern Michigan University in Ypsilanti. Doors open up at 3 p.m. Dr. Umar will speak at 4.30. Doors open up at 3 p.m. today. Dr. Umar will speak at 4.30. It's absolutely free. Absolutely free. You don't need to register. All you need to do is show up. If you do need to call somebody, you can call 734-802-8072. You don't need to call, but if you want to call, 734-802-8072. You don't need to call, but if you want to call, 734-802-8072. Eastern Michigan University, today, August the 3rd, Black Consciousness Conference, day two inside of the Honors College from 3 until 7. Hit the Cash App, dollar sign FDMG School. Hit the PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. I'm not going to keep you guys too long. I do hope some of you decide to join me in Boonell, Florida on the day Tuesday, two days after tomorrow. Tuesday, August the 6th. Kim C. Hammond Criminal Justice Center, 1769 Moody Boulevard, 8 o'clock a.m. will be the sentencing hearing from Brendan Depper, the 18-year-old brother who we're trying to keep from having to serve 30 years in prison for attacking a teacher assistant who had no legal right to take his Nintendo Switch out of his hand, a school system that had no legal right to deny that young man the psychological and educational services that he was entitled to. Please come and stand with us. We will be inside of the Kimsey Hammond Criminal Justice Center, Boonell, Florida, this Tuesday, August the 6th, 8 o'clock in the morning. Don't be late. Don't be late. Once the courtroom fills up, they're not letting anybody else in. Today is the solar return of one of our greatest Pan-Africanists. Today is the solar return of one of our greatest Pan-Africanists. Today is the solar return of one of our greatest Pan-Africanists, Edward Wilmot Blyden, who was born in St. Thomas, the U.S. Virgin Islands. He came to the United States of America to attend seminary school. He was excluded from seminary school because of his race. He cooperated with the great Honorable Frederick Douglass. He ultimately immigrated to Liberia becoming the Secretary of State of Liberia, and he's currently buried in Sierra Leone. Peace and Pan-Africanism to my Liberian Africans. Peace and Pan-Africanism to my Sierra Leone Africans. Yesterday was the Earth Day of James Baldwin, our great black intellectual writer, social critic James Baldwin was born August the 2nd. Edward Wilmot Blyden was born August the 3rd. Please get your tickets for the Nat Turner Land Celebration. Please get your tickets for the Nat Turner Land Celebration. Go to natturnerlibrary.com. Go to natturnerlibrary.com. 
go to natturnerlibrary.com. Am I Muslim? I am not. I am African. Peace and Pan-Africanism to all my Muslim brothers and sisters. Tremendous respect for the religion of Islam. I was raised in the religion of Islam. Islam was my foundation. But African spirituality, Ifa, Yoruba culture, is my elevation. Islam was my foundation. But Ifa is my elevation. Islam was my foundation. But Ifa is my elevation. For my sisters who came out yesterday, my beautiful African queens of Michigan, y'all look so beautiful. Some of you did not text me our pictures. So if you was at Eastern Michigan University last night, please text me the photos that we took. Brothers as well, elders as well, send me the photos for my own records, please. 215-989-9858. 215-989-9858. I'm looking for somebody who does video work to go through my social media and put together a one hour collage of all my photos and events that Dr. Umar has participated in since my explosion onto the national and international black consciousness scene back in September of 2010. I need someone to volunteer. I want a video created of photos and events and interviews that I have participated in in these past 14 years of one of the most illustrious black consciousness careers in Pan-African history. I want a video with some music that I can post showing all the people who came out, the children, the elders, 14 years from Africa to Europe, to Asia, to the Caribbean, to Canada, to Central and South America, across the United States. I want somebody to volunteer. I'm not looking for people, find me. I'm the King Kong of consciousness. You find me. Where's my royalty privileges? Where are my royalty privileges? Brothers and sisters, 215-989-9858, you can text me. 215-989-9858. I'm trying to get my passport, family. I'm trying to get my passport. I do not want to cancel London. I do not want to cancel Costa Rica. If we got any Africans who work for the passport service, if you can please look into the conspiracy against Dr. Umar's passport renewal, please look into the conspiracy against Dr. Umar's passport. You should know my phone number. It's been the same number for 19 years. You should know my phone number. It's been the same number for 19 years. 215-989-9858. 215-989-9858. Now, let me talk about why I went live this morning. Let me talk about why I went live this morning. The reason, the reason, happy to be nappy. We always happy to be nappy. We always happy to be nappy. The reason I went live today is I want to talk about the extermination campaign against the American African people. I'm trying to figure out why the American African people are more concerned about a presidential election than stopping black on black homicide in our community. I'm trying to figure out why the American African people are more concerned about a presidential election than stopping black on black homicide in our community. If I tuned day three times, I am more concerned. I am concerned about why the American African people from California to Kalamazoo, from Flint, Michigan, to Florida, from Detroit to Des Moines, Iowa. I'm trying to figure out while we are more concerned about voting than we are about stopping the homicide crisis in our black community. And do you know what bothers me the most as a social scientist? Do you know what bothers me so much as a social scientist? 
what I find so egregiously unacceptable as a social scientist. Black people act as if we are not living within the context of black on black genocide. Do you realize we don't even ask the presidential candidates about the violence in our community? We don't even ask the governors about the violence in our community. We don't ask the mayor. We act like black men are not exterminating each other on a daily basis. How did we become so immune to black on black crime? How did we become so immune to the tears of black women, the tears of black mothers? All these black mothers across America have had to bury their sons and their daughters. They've had to mourn in silence because the community doesn't care enough to embrace them. Our black mothers have had to endure the pain of losing their babies and not having a sympathetic community shoulder to cry on. How did we get to the point where black on black homicide is not even a concern for most black people? Let me put this in context. Let me resensitize you to black on black homicide. Black men are the leading cause of death for black men. I want you to sit on that for one minute. I want you to sit on that. Black men are the leading cause of death for black men. Arabs are not the leading cause of death for Arabs. East Indians, Kamala Harris's people, East Indians, Kamala Harris's people, they are not the leading cause of death for themselves. European Jews are not the leading cause of death for European Jews. Anglo-Saxons are not the leading cause of death for Anglo-Saxons. Chinese are not the leading cause of death for China. Black men are the leading cause of death for black men. And the black community is completely silent. Those three black women who sat on the panel in Chicago representing the National Association of Black Journalists. Those three black women who sat on that panel in Chicago with Donald Trump representing the National Association of Black Journalists. They didn't ask him a single question about his plans to reduce black on black violence. And let me be clear. Although black on black violence is a black problem, it is completely engineered by the white power structure. Every ingredient that goes into black on black crime is engineered and introduced by the white power structure. The unemployment engineered and introduced by the white power structure. The poverty engineered and introduced by the white power structure. The guns, the weapons engineered and introduced by the white power structure. But our three sisters didn't ask him a single question because black on black fratricide is not a concern for black feminists because they don't care about black men anyway. Black on black homicide is not a concern for black feminists because they don't care about black men anyway. But yet you will turn around and say, we don't have enough black men. We don't have no good black men. But you do nothing to save the lives of black boys to make sure your daughters will have good black men. But I digress. But I digress. Let me put black on black homicide in perspective. A black boy in America is 23 times more likely than a white boy to be shot and killed by someone who looks like him. I want to say that one more time. I want to say that one more time. A black boy in America is 23 times more likely to be shot and killed 
by someone who looks like him than a white boy. 23 more times. Since y'all act like we don't have a black on black crime epidemic. I want to resensitize you because you have been desensitized. And I'm trying to understand how y'all go to church every Sunday. Y'all go to the masjid every Friday. Y'all go to the temples on Sunday claiming to worship God. Oh, yes. I'm talking to all the religions. African spiritualists, you are not exempt. African spiritualists, you are not exempt. My Yoruba devotees, my Igbo devotees, my Lukumi, my Palo, my Santeria, my Voodoo, my Dogon, my Akan, you are not exempt. All black people participate in religious service, claiming to serve God, claiming to worship God, and yet you do nothing in your religious centers to address black on black crime. You go to church every Sunday and y'all don't do nothing in church to address black on black crime. Y'all don't do anything in the Muslim masjids to address black on black crime. You don't do anything in the Jehovah Witness Temple, the Roman Catholic Church, the Ifa, the Elays of Ifa. The Akan, the Dogon, the Voodoo, we don't do nothing. We are a bunch of spiritual hypocrites. Spiritual hypocrites. If your religious center, if your church, your mosque, your Ile is doing nothing to address black on black crime, then we are a bunch of religious hypocrites, spiritual hypocrites. And you wonder why the Almighty does not address our problems. You wonder why the Almighty does not respond to black people's prayers. God don't have a reason to listen to us. We are an embarrassment, not just on earth. American Africans are an embarrassment in heaven. I'm going to say it again. And I don't care who don't like it because I am Mr. Unapologetically African. I don't care who don't like it because I am Mr. Unapologetically African. I don't care who don't like it because I'm Mr. Unapologetically African. We are not only an embarrassment on earth. The American African family is an embarrassment in heaven. Your ancestors are embarrassed of you. Your spirit gods are embarrassed of you. The Orisha, the Loa, the Abusum, the Netters of Kemet, they are embarrassed of you. You run around calling yourself a Kemite. You run around calling yourself a Kemite. Our ancient Nile Valley ancestors, they don't recognize you. They don't claim you. You got black boys out here killing each other out of desperation. And you calling yourself a spiritual devotee of the Most High. Make it make sense. Truth be told, the African spiritual community is just as hypocritical as the mainstream Muslim and Christian community. I said, truth be told, the African spiritual community is just as hypocritical as the mainstream Muslim and Christian community. Brothers and sisters, I'm speaking for the ancestors. I'm speaking for all of those who have died. We protest whenever the police kill us. Why isn't there a march every time one of us kills us? We protest when the police kills us. Why isn't there a march every time one of us kills us? Because we don't care about black people killing black people. And then we got a dysfunctional, parasitic, gangster rap, hip hop community. And then we have a dysfunctional, parasitic, gangster rap, hip hop community that glamorizes glorifies and popularizes black on black crime. I said it glamorizes, glorifies and popularizes black on black crime. Fake ass hip hop community. These fake ass rappers defending the lyrics in their music that perpetuates and glorifies and glamorizes black on black crime. And when you try to hold them accountable for their lyrics, they say gangster rap is not hip hop. When you try to hold them accountable for their lyrics, they say gangster rap is not hip hop. 
when you try to hold them accountable for the filth that they purvey in their music, they turn around and say gangster rap is not hip hop. So if gangster rap is not hip hop, if gangster rap is not hip hop, you cowards of the hip hop community, if gangster rap is not hip hop, why is it okay for gangster rap to be hip hop at the BET Awards? Why is it okay for gangster rap to be called hip hop when it's time for the music awards, the Grammy Awards, the Soul Train Awards? It's okay for gangster rap to be called hip hop any other time of the year. It's okay for gangster rap to be called hip hop any other time of the year until you want to hold hip hop accountable for gangster rap. Then all of a sudden, gangster rap is not hip hop. Then all of a sudden, y'all notice the hypocrisy of the gangster rappers, the hip hop community. Gangster rap is hip hop any other time. Gangster rap is hip hop 360. Four days out of the year. But so when you say we're going to hold the hip hop community guilty for gangster rap, all of a sudden, gangster rap ain't hip hop no more. Because they don't want to hold the gangster rappers accountable. Even the conscious rappers don't want to hold the gangster rappers re responsible. Nobody cares about the life of black men, not in even black men. Nobody cares about the life of black men, not even black men. Nobody cares about the life of black men, not even black men. Let me get back. So a black boy is 23 times more likely to be murdered by another black boy than a white boy is likely to be murdered by another white child. Let's put gun violence in perspective. Black on black male murder. Black on black male murder. Black on black male assassination. Black on black male execution. Is so big of a problem. Black on black elimination. Is so big of a problem. That black on black extermination is how do I say this correctly it is 19 times as big of a cause of murder than the next biggest cause of death for black men I want y'all to understand what I'm saying black on black male assassination is 19 times bigger than the next cause of death for black men, which is suicide. I'm going to say this again. I don't think y'all hear me. I'm going to say this again. I need y'all to understand this. Black on black male assassination is the leading cause of death for black men. The second leading cause of death for black men is suicide. Right? But... The gap between homicide and suicide. The gap between black on black male homicide and black male suicide. Black on black male assassination is 19 times bigger of a problem than the next cause of death, which is suicide. Do y'all understand what I'm saying, brothers and sisters? And you weren't about Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. How can Donald Trump and Kamala Harris be more important to you than we as a community stopping the violence in our community? How can Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, neither one of them care about black people, neither one of them are a black person. How can that be more important than us stopping our young people from killing our young people? Let me tell you why you could ignore Black children killing black children. You can ignore that. You can ignore black children killing black children and you will go straight to Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. Do you want to know why? Most of you have abandoned the black community after you earned your master's degree. You could care less what happens in the black community. Most of you are black bourgeoisies. Petty bourgeoisie 
middle class bourgeoisie, upper bourgeoisie, 99% of you Negroes have abandoned the black community and you therefore could care less what happens to your nieces and nephews who still live there. You could care less about what happens to your little brothers and sisters who still live there. You could care less about the children of the people you grew up with who still have to live there. You moved out. That's why y'all don't talk about black on black violence because most college educated blacks PWI and HBCU. Most college educated blacks, PWI and HBCU, you have moved into a white community or a mixed community. You don't live in a black community, so you don't give a damn about black on black crime because you don't come into the ghetto except to work in the hospitals, except to work in the public schools, except to work in your city job. You don't come into the ghetto no more. You could care less. That's why. Black men, you political cowards. Most of you moved out the community as soon as you could, and you only go back to exploit the athletic ability of young black boys on your football team. Black men only go back to the community to exploit the athletic talent of black boys on your basketball team. Black men only go back to the black community to exploit the black, the athletic talent of our black boys. You don't give a damn about the black community. You just need the athletes. You ain't no better than the N NBA, the NFL, or the NCAA. NCAA, National Association of Coons who approximate African athleticism. National Association of Coons who approximate African athleticism for personal benefit. NCAA. I just gave y'all a new name. I just gave y'all a new name. I just gave y'all a new name. That's why black on black crime is not a conversation because it doesn't bother the well-to-do blacks. And the media only puts the well-to-do blacks on television. The media only puts the well-to-do blacks on television. The media only puts the well-to-do blacks on television. You never hear from the working class blacks and you never hear from the underclass blacks. You never hear from the impoverished black people. That's why black on black crime isn't a mainstream issue because the middle class black America working upper class black America, they could care less. You school teachers don't care. You city workers don't care. You comfortable. You could pay for your kids to go to a private school. That's why y'all support school choice. That's why y'all support school choice. School choice ain't no solution for a single black mother in the hood with four kids. She can't offset the cost of tuition. So what if the school district gives her a couple thousand dollar voucher? So what if the school district gives her a couple thousand dollars voucher to send her kid to a private school? She can't pay the difference in the tuition. You get $5,000 to send your kid to a private school from the Flint schools or the Muskegon schools or the Kalamazoo schools or the Detroit schools or the Inkster schools or the Highland Park schools. They give you a $5,000 voucher, but tuition is $20,000. They give you a $5,000 school choice voucher, but tuition is $20,000. They give you a $5,000 school choice voucher, but tuition is $20,000. How is that a solution for our single black mothers? We don't care about black on black crime. I heard a Negro say Barack Obama gave us health care. Health care. He ain't do nothing about black on black crime. Walk into the ghetto and ask them what the number one problem in the ghetto is. Nobody's going to say health care. Nobody's going to say voter registration fraud. Health care and voter registration fraud are not a top five problem in the black community. Health care and voter registration fraud, that's not a top five problem in the black community. Nobody in the ghettos of Detroit or the ghettos of Baltimore or the ghettos of Oakland or the ghettos of Fort Worth, Texas or the ghettos of Chicago. Nobody in the ghettos of Jackson, Mississippi, the ghettos of Little Rock, Arkansas, the ghettos of Fort Lauderdale, the ghettos of Georgia, the ghettos of 
Richmond, Virginia, nobody's thinking about no damn voter fraud. You will never hear a black person in the hood talk about some damn voter fraud as a major problem. Voter fraud is a major problem for black bourgeoisie Negroes. Voter fraud is a major problem for black bourgeoisie Negroes. And then when we talk to the politicians about violence in the community, we ask them, what are they going to do to stop the violence? That is not the question you ask a politician. Political science 101. You don't ask the politician, what are you going to do about violence? That's not the question. We're supposed to tell them what to do about violence, not ask them what they're going to do about violence. You're supposed to tell them what they're going to do about violence, not ask them what they're going to do about violence. You're supposed to tell them what to do about violence, not ask them what to do about violence. If you ask them what to do about violence, you know what they're going to give you more white police and more white prisons. If you ask them what they're going to do about violence, they're going to give you more white police and more white prisons. If you ask.